Oh, yes. You say, Jesus will comfort me when I'm hurting? Yes, he will. Listen to what he did here. This is found in, in John 11, 1 through 45, but we're not going to co cover the whole chapter. Amen. There, amen. But we are going to co cover a certain part of it. Amen. And it's very familiar scripture too. Talking about Christ raising Lazarus from the dead. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Bethany, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Amen. How many realizes and understand that what this is saying, that Jesus loved Lazarus? He was a friend to Lazarus. He knew Lazarus. Verse 4 says, When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're afflicted, Brother John. But the afflictions that come unto the children of God, the Bible says many shall be afflicted, but God shall deliver them out of all. We don't have to worry. That don't mean it don't hurt. Brother John suffered affliction for a couple weeks there, and I guarantee you he wished he had, I had to go through none of it. Amen? But through it, he learned to trust God. Amen? I promise you, he learned a little more about prayer. Amen? He learned a little more about hurting and pain and what God can do. Amen? what God can deliver you from. Amen? Amen? We all serve a God who cares. One that's concerned. If it concerns you, Rita, it concerns God. I'm so glad that we serve a caring God. One that loves us. Amen? One that's compassionate and cares for us and will take care of us. Amen. Listen. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now why did he do that? Because he had a reason. How many know there's always, God always has a reason and purpose for doing things the way he would have them done? That's why it's very important that we realize that God's timing is always right on time. Amen. We don't need to get uh, and make haste decisions, Melinda. Amen. But we need to learn to be patient and wait on God. And you know what? When we learn to put our trust and faith in God, God always shows up right on time. He's never a minute late. Amen. He's always there right when you need him the most. Amen. He'll not let you down. Amen? Why? Because he's a good God. Because he loves you and he knows best for you and I. Amen? But, you know, we as humans, we'd say, well, Jesus must not have cared too much about Lazarus. It's been two days he ain't even showed up. <laughs> right? Amen. Where's he at? He said he loved Lazarus, but he ain't even come. He had two days to get here. It wouldn't have took him six hours to get here. He was just over yonder. Right? Verse 7 says, Then after that says he, to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Amen. An example for you and I. Amen. If we'll walk in Christ, we won't stumble. Amen. But when we choose to do things our way, when you choose to do things your way, 
and not Yahweh. Amen. You'll stumble and you'll fall. Amen. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Y'all, we can't follow after the world and call ourselves Christian. We can't do it, Sister Lamont. We got to be sold out, blood bought. Amen. We've got to stand. The Bible says when we've done all we know to do, just stand still and see the salvation of God. God has a reason and a timing for all things. Amen? And we need to realize this. And such an example this is to you and I tonight, amen, to realize that God's always right on time. Amen? He'll always show up right on time. <clears throat> you turn to find where I was at. Eleven. These things said he, and after that he says unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, You know, we just stop right there too, amen. A lot to minister on right here. You know, he said right here, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. How many know that when we get a little too far away from God, he'll shake us real good, amen? He'll wake us up, amen. Why? Because he wants to keep us in right standings, amen. He wants us to stand still and see the salvation of God. He wants us to put our trust and faith in him. I promise you, amen, he'll take care of you if you'll just trust him, amen. If you'll put your faith in him, amen. If you'll believe, amen, the Bible says, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen? When it comes impossible is when we begin to doubt and have unbelief. Amen? And God wanted to do something to those people. He wanted them to believe. Amen? That's why he allowed this to happen. Amen? That's why he allowed Jesus to wait two days so that he could open their eyes from asleep. Amen? He wanted to wake them up. Amen? And let them know. Amen? That he was God and there's nothing impossible with him. Amen? If you go back and study this, you'll find out that after three days, they didn't believe anybody could come back. Amen? That's why he waited till the fourth day. Amen? See, God knows what he's doing. A lot of times we get haste, make haste decisions. We get in such a hurry that we won't wait on God. And we rush things. Sister Hope, and it's important that we don't rush that situation, but that we pray and fast about it and ask God to intervene, amen, and ask God to move those spirits, amen. She knows what I'm talking about. Amen. You know, church, we need to pray for Christ, Christina, amen, and fast for her, amen. You might not realize, amen, but she's bound with evil spirits, amen, and they've manifested themselves to the point that hope has seen those spirits, amen. Now, you are to not shake your head and, and begin to doubt right now that that's not true, amen, because it is true, amen. It's just as real as you and I sitting here. It's just what Brother Frankie preached on this morning about deception, about an evil spirit, amen, about being bound and, and overtaken by the enemy, amen. Her only hope rests in someone that will believe because what's happened to her, she has no control over. You remember, I'm, I'm just going to slow down for a minute. We'll get back on the message in just a minute. But you remember the, the, the boy that was lunatic, amen, because he was possessed with legions, amen? Right? Now tell me it's not true. 
Because if you try to disbelieve that, then you're not believing in what the Bible says. A lot of people don't want to believe that, especially those that are scribes and Pharisees, amen. Especially those that are religious, amen, and not children of God, amen. Been given the power thereof, but have denied that power. We can't deny that power, y'all. We've got to be the children of God. We've got to stand upon the rock. Amen. Put our trust and faith in God and say, God, if you want to use me in this situation, God, God help me to prepare for this situation. You've got to begin to pray and fast about it. Amen. And ask God to use you. Amen. The Bible said perfect love cast it out all fear. We heard this morning that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Right? Not the fear of the devil. If you're a child of God, you got power to tread over all serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. What you've got to learn how to do is to use that power. Amen? To allow God to uh, use you in a situation that's placed before you. He allowed you to see that situation so that you would pray about it and get ready. Amen? We have to be interceders. And here we find that Lazarus, the Bible says in verse 11, these things said he, and after that he says unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Lazarus was dead, y'all. He was deader than a dime, amen? He wasn't making no sense no more. Amen? He never made it to 11. Sense, that is. Just trying to wake you up. He was dead. He wasn't really asleep. He was dead. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He knew what they was thinking. Do you see all this? How awesome and how anointed Jesus was? Why? Because he had a relationship with the Father. And you too can have that anointing in your life. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent you may believe. So see, he was saying, look, this is why I bowled in two days and I didn't show up already, amen, because I want you to believe, amen. I want you to realize, amen, what I can do. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in that grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Mary was interceding. I'm just going to paraphrase this. Martha was so cumbered about such serving that Mary did. Amen? Because Mary wouldn't get up and help her to clean the house and do these things because she was more concerned about talking to Jesus. Amen? She was more concerned about reaching the Master. Amen? More concerned about what she needed to do and how whatever God would do, amen. She was praying and interceding for Lazarus. Amen. She was doing that which was needful, amen. So many times we neglect to do that which is needful. Don't you neglect to do what is needful, 
Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He's all over me. Amen. I was standing outside talking to Frankie as we left him. And I couldn't tell you right now to this minute what he said or what was said. Amen. But I know this as we were standing out there and it was hot outside. All of a sudden, man, the Holy Ghost hit me and I felt like an air conditioner was all over me. I said, Brother Frankie, I said, I'll just tell you right now, I feel the Holy Ghost. He, he said, boy, it's hot out here. I said, I'm not hot at all. I feel like an air conditioner is all over me. Amen. Because those goosebumps were running all up and down my back, legs, neck, amen. amen. It's all over me right now, Brother George. I can tell you right now, God's real, amen. And God wants to do something in this house tonight, amen. If it's not anything but to cause you to believe, amen. He wants you to realize that he's your rock. He cares for you, amen, just like he did Lazarus. He cared about the way Martha fell. He came to comfort her. Her and Mary. And he came to wake those that went to her asleep up. Not just Lazarus, but those that were spiritually sleeping. Do you understand tonight, amen, that you can spiritually fall asleep, amen, by neglecting to study to show yourself approved, by neglecting to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a master, amen. You can fall spiritually asleep and die, amen. God don't want you to die. He's here to wake you up tonight. He's here to show you that he still loves you, amen. You still have breath in your body. It's not over, amen. You've not faltered and fell to the point, amen, that you can't make heaven your home because you still got breath in your body. There's still hope this side of eternity. Amen. It rests in Jesus, amen. Always has. Always has. Thank God. Thank God for the blood, amen. amen? Thank God for the blood, amen? We ought to give him a hand clap tonight, amen? Thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus Christ, amen? If it weren't for Jesus, all of us would be headed to the devil's hell, amen? Turn with me to Mark chapter 8, amen? We find here in Mark chapter 8, Jesus providing for their hunger, amen? Amen? Why? Because they had become followers of Jesus Christ. Who had? There was 5,000 here that followed Jesus and had and ate for three days, George. They had to be hungry. Some of you can't go an hour without eating. Amen? Poor old Dustin's on a diet. Amen? Well, I'll tell you one thing. He knows how to put the water away. He says, if I drink a gallon of water a day, I lose two pounds. You want to lose two pounds a day? Dustin said, two, two, uh, a gallon of water, you'll lose two pounds a day. That's pretty good. You better love water, huh, Dustin? Amen. He took care of those that was hungry. He made a way where there was no way. There's miracles took place because, and they got to experience the miracles. Why, Sister LeVon? Not because, and this ain't directed towards you, amen. Not just because I'm standing here, I'm not against you because you was out this morning. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Right. But I'm going to tell you straight up, amen, I wish you'd have been here. Yeah. Amen. I don't want any of us to miss when the doors are open. But there's times that we have to. There's times and God understands and sees and knows more than you think. Amen. He knows everything. Now if you missed and you could have been here, it's your, you're in trouble. Amen. That's between her and God. But I'll say this. If we'll be followers of God, He'll take care of us. He'll feed us for Him. Clothe us and take care of us. Now I'll tell you something about Sister LaVon. 
She's been with us longer than anyone else in here. She's took a licking and kept on ticking. Amen. There's been times she's <laughs> throwed up her hands and walked out, but God brought her back. And I'm glad, amen, because we need Sister LaVon. 